Greetings and uh, welcome to uh, worship uh, from St. John's Lutheran in Marion, Wisconsin. Uh, we hope that your week has uh, been a, a good one. I share with you just a few uh, brief uh, announcements. Uh, next uh, Sunday, you fortunately won't be seeing my smiling face, but instead, Pastor Sarah Gorman will now be with the members of St. John's as she comes together with them in ministry as the uh, new pastor. Uh, I, I want to extend at this time uh, a personal thank you and a thank you on your behalf uh, to all of those musicians and vocalists who have shared their talents uh, with us in worship over the recent months. Just going to share their names with you. Their first name, Lee, Karen, Sharon, Betty, Jackie, Curly, Pat, Tracy, Jackie, Linda, Denise, Mandy, Troy, Ward, Ray, Maddie, Kay, and anybody whose name I have missed. Uh, it's one reason I personally don't like long lists because you usually leave somebody out. So let us know if we have missed your name, and I apologize uh, for that. I uh, want to thank you uh, for sharing uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, with me since my time with you, and I uh, continue to pray that God's blessings would be uh, with you as you too share in that wonderful ministry in Christ's name. At this time, we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you have called us from out of nothing and from nowhere to be your body, your presence in the world, your church. Though our church has its problems, divisions, timidity, and morbidity, you have promised to make us into salt to season an unsavory world to be light to shine in the darkness. Lord, help us to shine. Make us more than we could be by ourselves. Join us together as members of your body so that we might be in your hands, your body, your blood, offered for the sake of the world. As we offer this prayer in your name, amen. Time for a children's message, and once again, I have my uh, brown bag that I've got a, a lot of something in here. Let me give you a few clues. Uh, something you might try and feed to an elephant. Something you might eat at a baseball game. But the thing is, what's in here is something that you've never seen before, and you're never going to see it again. So what am I talking about? Talking about a peanut, of course, which I'm guessing a number of you uh, had guessed. And, and by the way, uh, just aside from the message, uh, remember that some of our friends are very, very allergic to peanuts, so be careful, you know, when you're serving them, when you have them for yourself, because some of our friends are very, very allergic. But anyway, the reason I brought this peanut is because it's something that you've never seen before and something you'll never see again. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, wait a minute. I've seen a lot of peanuts. True. But, number one, I'm going to guess you've never seen this peanut. But, as part of my message, and now I have to try and break it open, and I hope I don't get anything on the floor, said Brenda. <laughs> but inside the shell of the peanut is the peanut. You've never seen it before, have you? Guess what? You're never going to see it again.
I wish I could offer you all peanuts. But now, why am I talking about peanuts? Something you've never seen before, and will never see again. I think it's a reminder of who we are to God. Each one of us is unique. There will never be another one of us. God has made us, God has blessed us, and God loves us as we are. We are his baptized children. And with that in mind, we are all special. And God loves us as we are. Yes, he forgives us when we do wrong, when we sin, but nevertheless, he keeps on loving us. And so as you look at other people, other students at school, other people on the street, I want you to remember that each one of them, like you, is extremely special. Uh, there's never been one like you. There will never be another one just like you. Yeah, we may look alike, or we may talk alike, or we may do all kinds of things that are very similar, but the fact is, we are all special, we are all unique, and uh, we rejoice in the fact that God has created us and that we as his people are to share his love with everybody. Remembering that everybody around us is like us. They too are special to God. And so we say, thank you God for making us, for being with us, for loving us and reminding us that we are special to you. Amen. The gospel for this Sunday comes to us from the 18th chapter of Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained them. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. 
Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, you have regained that one. Dear friends, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our message on this, my last Sunday, in a sense, time of worship with you, uh, has two parts. One basically focuses on the gospel for this Sunday, which deals with how we are to resolve issues of disagreement and argument within the church. And secondly, the letters T-T-A-J, which gives us direction <coughs> for our mission as God's people, for our work as a community of faith in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. First, it becomes <laughs> very apparent that Jesus expects, not wants, but expects that there will be trouble, that there will be difficulty among the peoples that make up his church. He has already seen that among his disciples. Remember the argument that was going on between James and John, the sons of Zebedee, as to who would sit at the right hand of Jesus and who would sit at the left hand of Jesus, places they saw as being important, places they saw as belonging to them. Jesus is giving us practical instruction as to how we are to live within our community of faith. I've listed four brief thoughts for us as we consider being together, being in union with us as we share our ministry with others in the church. Perhaps the most important aspect of that in terms of how we get along is to remember that the church, the community of faith, consists of people like us. Now that may frighten you, that we're surrounded within the church by people like us with concerns, with problems, with blessings, with difficulties, etc., etc. In other words, kind of like the peanuts of the children's message. They are similar to us. They are like us, but they're also different from us. And we know that being honest, people like us can be difficult, that in our lives we are in need of forgiveness from God and forgiveness from one another. Secondly, with this in mind, I invite you to get rid of what I'm calling your balance sheet of rights and wrongs of yourself and of others. Have you ever noticed that any such balance sheet is subjective based on your perspective of how things should be? I'm willing to bet that any such balance sheet that you might have 
shows that the other person's is longer than yours with sins or wrongdoings that are worse than yours. So get rid of it. It serves no purpose. It serves no purpose because that individual has the same makeup that you do. Struggles, blessings in life. Not better, not worse, but someone like yourself. And then thirdly, with this in mind, we are to forgive and we are to experience being forgiven. Sometimes I ask myself, which is harder to do? To forgive someone else or to accept forgiveness? And often I conclude that it is harder for us to accept the forgiveness of others. Why? Because it means we admit we were wrong and that we had sinned. Even in our relationship with a loving, forgiving God, we sometimes find ourselves saying to God, I'm wrong, God, but, and then we go on to explain why we were wrong. During the pandemic, we often have seen the slogan, the motto, we are in this together. And so we are as Christ's church. It is good to remember that the church of Christ is his. It is not ours. It is not mine. It belongs to our loving God. And we are called to function as a loving, forgiving community. You see, while Christ expects there to be division and turmoils and argument and enmity within the church, he really desires that we be a distinctive community of faith so that people looking at the church, at the congregation might say, See how they love and forgive each other. We are never going to be perfect. And for that reason, we understand the need for God's forgiveness for us, for our willingness to forgive others, to put aside the past, and to let others forgive us. We are to be a beacon of light in a world of dark places. We are to witness to the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news in which we are sisters and brothers that experience God's love and God's forgiveness. And then moving on to the second part of this message, we might ask the question, what are we to do as brothers and sisters in Christ, as a community of faith? Well, it's very simple to me. We are to T-T-A-J. What? What's that about? Well, let me tell you a little bit about past ministry. Um, as our young people were being or about to be confirmed after their time of study, I would meet individually with those students. And I would say to them, hey, if somebody comes to you at school the day after you're confirmed and says, hey, what was that all about? What are you gonna say to them? Well, for some it was easy, for some it wasn't. But at the same time, I came to the conclusion that I had a simple answer for them. All they had to do was T-T-A-J, T-Tell, T-Them, A-About, and you could fill in the J, which of course was Jesus, 
Tell them about Jesus. We, as God's people, ought to share the good news by telling others about Jesus. We can share our story of Jesus in our lives. We can tell them about the Son of God who went to the cross so that we might be forgiven, who was raised from the dead so that we might live eternally with God. And we hear of a God who is with us in the midst of all things. And so, in our ministry, in our time together, in all of our words, in all of our actions, we are intended to T-T-A-J, tell them about Jesus. And if you do that, you are doing what our purpose in life as God's children is. May God bless you. May he keep you and your family in faith, in peaceful safety. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. this time we share our prayers. It will be that time when you can offer uh, names of individuals uh, for God to be with and to bless. And so now as we are drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Loving Father, uh, we do not know what the future holds. And we are wrong if we think you are not with us. 
We are sorry for those times our faith falters, and you know we need your help. So very simply put, help us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, hope you provide generously for us. Help us to find ways to eliminate poverty and hunger that affects too many people around the globe. Bless our local food pantry. It gives us the opportunity to help others within our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving Father, you have blessed each of us with talents and gifts that the world needs. Help us to utilize our gifts in service to you, as have our musicians and vocalists during worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Even when our situations remain the same, grant us the grace to trust you and thank you for your gracious help. May you continue to comfort those who are experiencing pain of any kind. Today, we especially pray for Doris, Gary, Grace, Jim, Mitch, Steve, Tammy, Darla, Charmaine, Ken, and others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, our faith seems small, yet when placed in your hands, it can produce a harvest greater than we can imagine. Take our tiny seed of faith and multiply it with your strength, wisdom, and guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as staff and students return to their education, we pray that you would be with them and that you would keep them safe during this pandemic time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of life, we thank you for the day-to-day -day blessings we too often take for granted. The wonderment of a child, the sunrise and sunset of each day, the hug when we least expect it. We vow to express gratitude through our attitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that in the midst of violence, you would help us in your love and forgiveness to be peacemakers in our community and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray those words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, receive the blessing of your loving and forgiving God. In the name of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go and may his peace be with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I conclude our worship time prior to the uh, closing hymn, I uh, just want to ask you, did you notice anything during the service? Remember last week during this uh, closing time, I asked you to guess what color of my clergy shirt I would be wearing today. Well, what is your answer? Go and have a great week. God goes with you. Enjoy Labor Day and time together. Be safe. And remember, we wear a mask because we love our neighbors.